You know when people ask you, what would you bring with you on a desert island? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. These are 10 things I cannot live without. Okay, this being a little bit dramatic, I think I could live a really full and happy life without these things, but having these things in my life either just makes it more enjoyable for me, and in some cases, more tolerable for you. We'll get to that. So these are 10 things I cannot live without. And this video is sponsored by Audible, but I'll talk about them more a little later on. The first thing I can't live without is probably the most basic of all basic things, and it is coffee. In that sense, my life is very much like one of those 2010 word art things that says, but first coffee. I literally look forward to making and drinking my coffee every single day. The way we like to make it at home is in the Chemex. You guys have seen all the B-roll of the coffee making here on this channel. We get beans from a local cafe here in Toronto called Zamello. So if you're ever visiting, make sure you check them out. They're kind of all over Toronto nowadays. So every morning I'll grind 20 grams of fresh beans and go ahead and do the whole pour over routine. This is something that happens literally every single day. And if I can't get my coffee in by a certain time, I'd say around 10 a.m., then I do start getting a headache. So coffee for me really is a pure joy, but at this point I'm also somewhat dependent on it because I definitely used to be one of those like corporate caffeine addicts where I used to drink more coffee than water and my entire diet pretty much consisted of coffee. But nowadays I really only have one coffee a day, most of the time at home on weekends and I'll bring it with me to work every day. And if I am getting coffee, my usual order is a 12 ounce black Americano with cinnamon powder. Yes, I drink my coffee black. I know that may say a lot about me. Number two is my moto jacket. My moto jacket is like an extension of my personality, or it really is my personality. I don't really know at this point. For me, I'm not so picky on whether or not it's real leather versus vegan leather. I've had both in the past, but when it comes to leather jackets, I really like a moto cut, one that fits properly, but just shy of loose. So it has a little bit of room if I wanna layer hoodies or sweaters or chunkier knits underneath. And it's super versatile, so you can wear it with jeans and a t-shirt, or you can dress it up with a really beautiful dress. Either way, it's gonna work and it always looks cool and it's always timeless. And did I mention my parents were bikers? So maybe that's where that comes from. The next thing I cannot live without is a hair tie. I have a hair tie lying around everywhere. They just sort of end up all over the apartment. For me, I love to have my hair down. I feel very put together when my hair is down, but when I'm working, I hate having my hair in my face. I usually have my hair in a ponytail or in some version of an attempted sleek bun, doesn't always work out and don't mind the grays, but most of the time, yeah, I gotta say my hair is usually back. I just don't want it in my face, I don't know. The next thing I can't live without is my budget. You guys know how much I love my budget and how starting to budget and consistently budgeting every single month has completely changed my life and changed the direction of my financial future. For me, most often I still use the Every Dollar app, the free version. I've never needed to use the paid version in my lifetime. I can do a video deep diving into exactly how I budget in real time and how I plan my finances every month if you guys want. All I do is whenever I spend money, I choose the category that I spent it in and pretty much immediately after the transaction, I will go ahead and type in that spending. And this has been the number one way that I've been able to stay conscious and stay on top of my spending habits, my savings goals, and not too long ago, my debt-free goals. Basically, there's always a plan for my money. And budgeting doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be cheap or as frugal as possible. When it comes to your spending, a philosophy that I really have taken to heart is one from the author Ramit Sethi, who wrote the book, I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Now, you guys know that I am not really a big reader when it comes to physical books. I just don't have the attention span. I don't know what it is. So my favorite way to read and consume books is through audiobooks. And I actually listened to this very audiobook, I Will Teach You To Be Rich, on Audible. It's narrated by Ramit himself, and I think you'll find his style and his delivery of the book really engaging, really funny. And for me, it's just been this really great money mindset shift that I have absolutely welcome into my life. It makes money feel like it's less scary and you can transform it into a tool that can help you say yes instead of something that just feels all about scarcity and saying no and denying yourself of the things that you enjoy. Ramit also has a podcast so I was able to listen to that on Audible too. There you'll find a ton of audiobooks, podcasts, guided meditations, workouts, pretty much anything you could ever want. Every single month, Audible members will get access to one free audiobook download and full access to the Plus catalog. 
So if there's something that's been on your reading list for the past little while, why not try Audible for free for the next 30 days? So if you're ready to give Audible a try, you can go to audible.com slash Christina or text Christina to 500 500. That's Christina to 500 500. And let me know what you're listening to. So if itemizing your budget the way I do is not quite for you, then I think definitely check out the audiobook I Will Teach You To Be Rich because Ramit offers a whole bunch of other ways to be able to track your spending, stay on top of it, and for you to be able to allocate funds consciously in the places that they need to go. So you'll always know where your money's going. And that to me is the most important part. But for me, I'm kind of a budgeting nerd at this point and I absolutely love mine. So I'm gonna stick with the Every Dollar app. The next thing I can't live without is my denim. You know, I've decluttered a whole bunch of my wardrobe over the past few years. And the one thing that has always stayed and even grown in my wardrobe is my denim collection. Yeah, at this point, I'll probably say it's a collection. For me, I don't know, I just can't get enough. I love all kinds of denim. I love light wash, dark wash. Give me denim with holes in it. Give me vintage, give me high rise, not low rise. We're not going back there ever again. But yeah, I just love jeans. My favorite types of denim are is definitely by the brand A Goldie or Vintage Levi's. My all-time favorite pair are these Vintage Levi 501s that I got from a reseller. I'll leave everything linked in the description. But for me, denim, I don't know. It's like casual, it's cool. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. And when you get like a really good fitting pair of denim, you just feel like a million dollars. I don't know what it is. You know, the bum just like looks so good. Just brings me genuine joy. We're all about the sparking joy over here. This one's a little bit obvious, but I can't live without my iPhone. I mean, really, truly, you could get rid of my computer, you could get rid of my laptop, iPad, even my TV. I could pretty much do all of my work on my iPhone. Mind you, probably a lot more inefficiently in certain cases, but this thing is pretty much an all-in-one multitasker. A lot of the work I do is online. I listen to my audiobooks on here, film content on here, all of my cringy TikToks, but they're actually a lot of fun. You should follow me there. I'll make notes, video ideas, everything is on my phone. And even in my downtime, I will use my phone. Like to watch YouTube videos is one of my favorite things to do. Or right now I'm re-watching all of Sex and the City. Um, and I can do that all from here. And then what goes so nicely with this phone that I cannot live without are my Apple AirPods Pro. I was so resistant to buying the AirPods for so long. I thought that they were kind of a waste of money. And for a while they were a worst purchase for me because they kept falling out of my ear. Turns out I didn't have the right earbud sizing for them. But but once I got that figured out, they 10 out of 10 make my life so much easier. Prior to having my AirPods, I was never a phone talker and I absolutely could not stand having to untangle the wired earbuds. They drive me absolutely nuts. So I was very much a text me, don't call me type of person. I still kind of am. Phone calls give me anxiety, but the AirPods make life so much easier. You know, if I have some downtime watching a video and Jeff wants to do something in the other room that I'll have my AirPods in and we don't bother each other. Every morning when I walk to work, I'll either listen to a podcast or an audiobook. And even now that gyms are open again, they just make working out so much easier. You're not like connected to anything. There's no cord flopping around, things like that. So highly recommend the AirPods Pro. That noise cancellation is like really good too. So yes, they are an item of convenience, I must say, but if I ever lost them, then I would replace them immediately, no question. The eighth thing I can't live without is this eye mask. And it's mostly because look, we don't really have curtains. This apartment is still a very temporary thing. Curtains are something that I don't really want to invest in. And we also live in Toronto in a city. Um, so there's a lot of just like, I don't know, what do you call it? Like light pollution in the area. There's always lights coming in from somewhere. We've never been able to get this apartment sort of pitch dark in the at night. So even with the blinds down and all that stuff, there's always a little bit of light coming in. We never got blackout curtains. And the most budget friendly solution after that was using an eye mask. For me, I really like this silk one. I've had it for a few months. It's really soft. I'm hoping the silk like helps with, you know, skin and preventing wrinkles. It's just one of my favorite things and I need a dark room when I'm sleeping. This is our DIY way to get that. Number nine is brows. You guys know that I plucked my brows when I was like 12 years old. They never grew back. And I heard the thin brow is kind of coming back in style. So I feel like uh, they're gonna have their moment soon. Love that for me. But either way, I need to draw in my eyebrows every single day. I got them microbladed a few years ago, but um, it just didn't last, didn't turn out very well. So in the meantime, I draw them on every single day. So for me, if I could have no other makeup on, I would choose to still draw in my brows because I feel like it just 
It just makes me feel more like a human being. I feel more awake, I feel more put together. And part of me also fantasizes of, about being like one of those fabulous cool girls that can just do brows and lipstick, no mascara, no other makeup. I just think that is such a look. Uh, that I really wanna try, but I'll need my eyebrow pencil to do it. So for me, having eyebrows on is like a security blanket. For some people, it's blush, others it's mascara, lipstick, concealer. Honestly, I feel like I could go without all those things as long as I just had my brows on. And the final thing I can't live without are my Lululemon Align leggings. Look, if you had to take my denim away for whatever reason, then I think I would still be okay as long as I had my Lululemon Aligns. To me, they are my favorite legging. I have multiple pairs of them. They're very buttery, very soft, and for me, the most flattering pair of leggings I've ever tried. They have a really nice high rise. They sort of suck everything in, like, it basically feels like you're wearing nothing at all. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. And to me, they don't look like you've, you know, like given up for the day. You can really, you can style them up with like, T-shirts, sets, I've dressed the leggings up on a few occasions, I've dressed them down. For me, they are a really great multitasker in terms of actually being used to work out and then transitioning into a more athleisure sort of street style everyday wear. So for me, they're very versatile, they're very comfortable if I'm like lying around at home or sometimes when I'm filming, not today, but I'll be wearing my aligns. The one thing I will say about the aligns that they get a lot of criticism for is that they can pill very easily. I think from the original versions, Lululemon has updated kind of the fabric so that they're a little bit more resistant to pilling. They're really only meant for some more gentle kind of workouts like yoga and Pilates. They're definitely not meant for spin or lifting. Anything that's a look a little bit more abrasive that has a lot of rubbing, they won't really hold up in that kind of scenario. But either way, they're comfy, they're flattering, they're nice and high-waisted. Highly recommend, and yeah, I'd be really sad if I couldn't have them anymore. So those are the 10 things I can't live without. If there was an 11th thing on the list, and I probably should have been number one really thinking back, it would have been sunscreen. Let's be real, face, body, everywhere. Let me know down in the comments what some of your can't live without items are, whether they be, you know, for functional purposes or just more for fun. Thanks again to Audible for sponsoring this video and don't forget you can get a free 30 day trial if you go to audible.com slash Christina or if you text Christina to 500 500. Again, that's Christina to 500 500. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really does help out my channel so much. I would so appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe if you want to. Thanks again for watching guys, bye.